This is Andy Perrault for Boxing Social in association with Betfred. I'm delighted to join by the former British middleweight champion, Zach Parker. Zach, how are you? Yeah, I'm all good, mate. How are you? Oh, I'm all good, thank you. Obviously, it's very good to hear that you're doing well. Come down today, first time that I've actually had the chance to meet you, yeah. to get a bit of an insight into the life of Zach Parker. Yeah. Zach, how is life treating you at the minute? What have you been up to? Yeah, it's all good. Just like ticking over it, mate. Waiting for another fight to come up. But um, yeah, just ticking over. All good, though. You're obviously someone who's very highly rated. You've had a lot of success boxing on the World Boxing Super Series cards most recently. How have you found this bit of a rise that you find yourself in and your name growing and obviously on the back of winning the British title, I know you've relinquished it since, but this rise over these last couple of years, how have you found it? Yeah, it's been good at us. Like, that's what you come into box for, to be on like, the big shows and that. But yeah, with uh, Silence, they've, they gave me the chance against Luke Blackledge and uh, once I performed, they, they thought, oh, I'm going to sign them up. So I've been, they've been putting me on their big shows ever since. And, I, I, like, I like being on, under them big lights, so that's what, that's what I've been boxing for. You just mentioned, obviously, the Southerns, who are your promoters. How do you find working with them? Yeah, they're good, they're good they are. They've like, treated me well, you know what I mean? Put me on the, all these big shows, taking me all like, across the world, over to Germany and whatnot. Yeah, but they, they've obviously got me the big fights as well uh, when I won the British against Darrow Williams, and I, I, I can't really fault them at the minute. Callas obviously developed this bit of a reputation of being a bit of a party boy yeah. <laughs> across social media. What's he like with regards to yourself? Have you ever seen Matt side to him? Uh, no, I've never seen him like that, no. Um, never seen him in like nightclubs or anything, no. But uh, I, speak to, I speak more to Nisa because uh, Kala likes doing like the, the big bit, you know what I mean? But obviously Nisa comes, is sound, you know what I mean? But both of them all good, all, always been good with me. It's always interesting, you know, when, when people think of the Southern Brothers, they naturally go towards Kala simply because when there are press conferences, etc., he's the, the man usually at the top table. Um, but what are they like as individuals? You know, if you could try and sum them up, what, what are they like? Um, since I've been speaking to them, they've been proper down to earth, like, just been like a normal lad, you know what I mean? But um, they've all, always been like Sam, like just like literally like I am when I was growing up, you know what I mean? But uh, yeah, I can't really fault them to prefer. And obviously with yourself, last time you was out and you fought, you was on the uh, boxing, World Boxing Super Series undercard up in Scotland. What was that experience like fighting up there? Uh, yeah, I boxed up there twice now. I boxed for the British title up there and I boxed that last one when it was on Josh Taylor undercard. Yeah, it's, um, it's, big, it's like a really nice room, about 10,000 people. So that's what you want in box for, to be in them big shows. And uh, yeah, take it with both hands, you know what I mean? Obviously, you mentioned that British title fight up in Scotland. What was your thoughts on that fight? You've had time to reflect, a lot of time to reflect on it since. Yeah. What was your thoughts on it? Because looking over social media, a lot of people thought Darrell Williams had won the fight. Yeah. Obviously, I know that you had an injury picked up very early on in the fight, but many people scored it towards Darrell. Yeah. What was your thoughts on it when you had a chance to watch it back as well? Once I watched it back, first thing I was saying, like, turn the turn sound off because the commentator was like, obviously like, quite biased towards him. At, but um, obviously, it man in the second round and... Uh, I, I like the first three rounds. I thought I won, and then uh, like in the middle, like two or three rounds in the middle. Obviously, that's when I uh, hurt myself first. And uh, once I had time to like like calm myself down and watch what I'm doing, and obviously I started picking my shots at the end and won like the last four or five rounds. I thought, with just with one hand as well. What was the plan when you picked up the injury? What was the plan then? What was you trying to achieve and trying to? How was you trying to work around it? Was got a fly? knocking in and around everywhere there. Yeah, it's like, once it came up, like, obviously I've never been in that situation before, but just had to keep a, keep a calm head. And uh, obviously I, I can turn southport, so first thing I did, like, turn southport, started using my jab at southport instead of just using, every, every time I used my left hand, it felt like it was like loose, like my arm was like about to come off, you know what I mean? But um, yeah, just kept my calm and then uh, picked my shots with my, my other hand. What did, Durrell bring into the fight then that maybe you wasn't expecting? Did he bring anything that you thought, ah, oh, this was something that I wasn't actually, not necessarily prepared for, but he brought something that you wasn't necessarily seeing him do so? No, that's what I thought he was going to do, just come at me like, it's like a little ball in here, so it, I thought that was going to come straight head forward with me, which he did do. But um, obviously once that injury, uh, once I had that injury, it was like turn the fight around a little bit. But and then uh, just I had to just have to take my time and just like think about what I was doing, and then uh, after a bit I was just like move, like box and move, jab, move. That's all I could do. 
Like, I couldn't uh, do combinations, but, like, you only had one hand, you know what I mean? I know, obviously, you've, you've fought since then, but do you have any desire to maybe have a rematch just to put that to bed, just to maybe shut anybody up who had Darrell Williams winning? Yeah, I, well, that's what I said straight away. I want a rematch straight away, but apparently, like, uh, he went, like, hey, well, not quit boxing, that. Uh, but that, I can't really like speak much about what he's doing. But I said to my manager and all team, I said we want a rematch straight away. That's what it was meant to be up up, up at um, up at uh, Glasgow. But uh, then he, he said no, that he, he's quit boxing, so couldn't do. I can't really do nothing about it when it's on his on his end. So what position do you find yourself in at the minute? I know you've just uh, well not just, but you've recently vacated the British title. What was yeah. the thinking behind that? Yeah, obviously me and my team are working on like big things, like more important things at the minute. Um, I'm sure it'll all come out soon enough, but like, uh, but yeah, it's bit, it's, I've got big, bigger fights on the horizon. Like I'm ranked number five in the world by WBA. I've, uh, last night I've been put up to number three by the WBO. Like I'm, I'm on the verge of like a world title, so that's that's why that's why I'm heading. I want to be at, be at the top. You know what I mean? Don't come into boxing just to win British title. You come to come in to be like at the top. You know what I mean? So I can take it that you have those ambitions now just to push towards world level. I know you're ranked highly with three uh, governing bodies. How quickly can you see your career accelerating towards a, a world title opportunity? Yeah, like obviously I'm ranked um, quite high WBA, IBF and uh, WBA. But um, so towards the end of the year, I think that's what I have a couple more fights. Like I've only had one fight since my injury. That was just like it was just like a shake off. Uh, but uh, have a couple more fights, get a, get a couple of tough opponents, try and take me some rounds, and then uh, towards the end of the year or start of next year, that's what I'm, that's what I'm thinking. You just mentioned you've only had like, one injury yeah. off the top of your head. How key can that be to your own success and to all the boxers' success with regards to obviously the less less the fewer injuries that they do have, yeah. the more that they can improve themselves and make them better themselves, and we don't need to worry about having to come back into the gym after yeah. a long layoff and trying to get rid of that ring rust. Yeah, once well, once I I've never had in, an injury like this bad before, but. Um, once I did it, I, I've been doing my physio and everything up at Black. I was doing my physio at Blackpool like four months it was, and then uh, obviously they put like loads of different sorts of uh, new new things to do, and I've never I've, I've never done all these like different stretches, doing like band work and all that weights. I've never done weights, and uh, they put all these like different things into my own game. You know what I mean? So now I've done that, it just makes me like a better, more of a better boxer. But um, yeah, get get a couple more fights just to get a ring like. I won't say ring rust because I'm I'm always in the gym yeah. all the time. You know what I mean? But um, it's just one that being under them big lights that that's the difference the, between sparring the, being under the big lights. But yeah, get a couple more fights and then hopefully get, push on to a world level. Is it frustrating? Oh, I, I, I know it's going to be frustrating, but how frustrating is it when, you, especially in your case, you've had that first serious injury? And it's completely new to you with regards to how you have to deal with it, and it it doesn't necessarily hold you back, but it just delays yeah. what you want to achieve. When, when, once it happened, I was I had to go for surgery like about a week after, and then once that I, I was just, just like bed bound really because I couldn't do I couldn't even move my arm or nothing otherwise like I'd injure it even worse. And then uh, I couldn't fight for like four or five months. Like it's hard because I'm I'm like trying to keep busy all the time. I do. But um, yeah, you just gotta you just gotta keep pushing forward, pushing forward with it. You can't you can't rush it, otherwise you'll just injure yourself even worse. But you just gotta be patient. You know what I mean? And obviously, we've mentioned you vacated that British title. But prior to doing so, Lerone Richards was called as your mandatory mandatory challenger. He had the Commonwealth title. Was that a fight which you had any interest in at all? Um, I didn't. I already said we was we my, like my team and that already said we was already going to relinquish it before that, and then he got pulled up from Manchester. But yeah, that that had been a good fight for me and him because like both tall, tall. Um, both could got a bit of a punch in us as well. So yeah, if, if I ever did come off, yeah, I think that'd be a good fight. But obviously, I've got bigger things coming up, and uh, I'm sure it'll all come out soon. But like, you know what I mean? They're, they're, that's what I'm pushing for. You know what I mean? Lerone obviously recently fought Tommy Langford, another man who's known very well around these ends. Yeah. What was your thoughts on that fight if you caught it? Uh, yeah, I watched a couple of clips of it. Yeah, it was, um, it was an alright fight, but um, I think it went distance, didn't it? Yeah. Uh, I think Tom Langford did quite well for saying like what he's been doing before. 
like at middleweight, but um, he might feel a bit better at super middleweight, don't he? Like with the weight weight situation, but um, yeah, it weren't like a proper exciting fight, but Lauren did what he had to do. You know what I mean? Get the win. When you look at someone like Tommy, he's obviously he's, he's achieved a lot in his career so far. He was he was unlucky with a cut at CD situation with regards to he lost that fight and he came out about his own issues which were going on uh, in the US. Tommy's obviously lost two or three fights now. Mm. Well, he's lost, uh, Jason Wellborn twice and then cut CD, so three fights. When you put that into your own context, do you ever think what happens to me if I lose? Because people kind of they'll, they'll maybe look at Tommy and think, where does he go from here? Do you ever does that ever maybe concern or worry you with regards to yourself? Add more pressure to your own career as well. Um, I won't think so. No, like obviously, um, I just I love it under the big lights. That's where I'm meant to be. But I don't think about losing. Uh, if you think about losing, you shouldn't be in the boxing boxing ring. I don't. That's why. That's how I feel. But like, so uh, all you got to think about is what your game plan is and what you're gonna do, and only come out with a W. In terms of the current British super middleweights, when you look across the scene, you've seen other Callum Smith, I know we've mentioned Aaron Richards, Chris Eubank Jr, Billy Joe Saunders, etc. Where would you rank yourself in and amongst the elite at British level? There's a, there's a lot of good fighters up there. Obviously, like some of them got better wins than like other, like other of us, but we're the ones who are just coming up. Uh, but um, towards towards the top, like top four at least. Like I, I know my skills, like, but like, you just need to get them. Um, you just need to get the fights made for you, don't you? But uh, yeah, t top four, I'd say. Are there any of those names, I know we've mentioned Lerone, but say out of Eubank or Billy Joe or yeah. Callum Smith, how far off a fight with one of those would you say you are? Would you be happy to take on one of those if it was offered to you now? If, if it was offered to me, I'd take it with both hands. Like That's what you unbox for, to be at the top. And once, once uh, Obviously, they've all got like, world titles. That's that's what that's what I want. You know what I mean? That's what I've set set my ambitions for. When since I was been a little kid, like amateur days. Yeah. So uh, if that came up like now, I'd take it with both hands. What are your thoughts on Chris Eubank Jr.? He's um he's someone who the public either you love or you don't. You love or you hate him. What are your thoughts on him? Yeah, he's, he's a good boxer. He's like. Um, He's, he's got his, he's got his ways. So him and, him and his dad's got his ways, but yeah, he's got. He can't like take it away from him. He's, he's done, been at the top, and uh, he's, he's quite a good boxer. But uh, I won't mind that fight like that. A lot of people, he ain't he ain't very um, active at the, at the minute, but like I won't mind that fight if it if it came up. You know what I mean? And to touch on the other two big British super middleweights. We'll start off with Billy Joe Saunders, who recently picked up the vacant WBO world title. Yeah. You're obviously third with those rankings. Yeah. What are your thoughts on Billy Joe, not just as a fighter, but that victory um, last time out when you picked up that vacant title? Yeah, I only watched like a couple of clips because it was the same night when I was boxing, so I couldn't really get like yeah. the old gist of it. But yeah, yeah, it did what he had to do. Now he's a two-weight world champion, so it's good for him. But um, I think he's a bit, in my opinion, I think he's a bit small for super middleweight. But we'll just have to see how he goes. Uh, he's obviously going to have to fight again soon. Just to see how it goes, we're against another, a bit bigger super midweight, a bit more better super midweight as well, because that, that lad who was boxing, I don't think he was that, that good. I think he lost like five times or something like that, but um, it is what it is, he, had, he, won, he got the W, didn't he? So it's all good. Whenever people think of Billy Joe Saunders, they always mention his amazing skill set, he's got brilliant footwork, etc. How do you try and negotiate around that? If you was in, say, in the ring with him, how would you try to close the gap, close the distance, and try to deal with Billy Joe's skill set? Yeah, he's a good boxer. Like he throws a lot of shots, but um, it's, it's all about timing. Like Floyd Mayweather used to say, like if timing beats speed and uh, beats combinations, that's what he did to Manny Pacquiao. Like um, you have to count the counter, the uh, box the boxer. You know what I mean? That's how I deal with it. I mean, obviously Callum Smith at the other end of the scale. You mentioned Billy Joe being very small. Callum Smith's obviously always looked at as being very big for the weight. What are your thoughts on Callum? Yeah, he's a good boxer as well. Like, obviously, uh, I'm gonna say all the top boxers are gonna, gonna be good, aren't they? That's why they're there. But um, yeah, he's he's he's, he's tall, but he ain't, like, I'm quite a big superman as well. So I I I try try and judge it from where I am. Uh, but um, yeah, he's a good boxer and be a good fight for me and him got it on as well. What are your thoughts on on his weight? A lot of people seem to think that he's coming in in between, you know, the light heavy. Well, obviously, he, he obviously he's coming in above light heavy when on the fight night. But people seem some think that he'll edge towards cruiser level, the old cruiserweight level of one ninety. 
if you was in the ring with him and you had somebody that big looking across you, what would be going through your mind? No, I'm fair, I'm quite a big Superman as well, so it wouldn't be like any difference than, than what I look at anyone else. Like you got to treat every opponent the same, so it wouldn't be no difference me fighting like a journeyman. It's the same mindset, so that's it. Obviously, with regards to yourself, you're a bit of a hidden gem in in British boxing, at least. What are your thoughts with how your career is progressing? And you don't seem to have like, this massive following. It can help you, it might it might not help you. What are your thoughts with regards to how you've been able to keep things manoeuvring at, kind of underneath the radar, as it were? Yeah, I've, obviously I've come underneath radar, but like I've always boxed away, like with the Salons, that, that I have to, they've got the big big shows, but it's always away, like up, it's always up Glasgow. That's why I'm trying to get a show around, around where I live, and then like I'd sell like loads of tickets, and like, the, um, say, saying like that, I went over Germany, I, I took like about 70 of us over there, like 70 to 100 people over there, and it, it was an empty arena when Rocky Field and uh, boxed Tyler and Zuga. But um, yeah, if I get one a bit closer, I'd, I'd get a lot more fans coming, you know what I mean? It's, money, it's, money, it's money for people, isn't it? So they've got, they've got to spend the money. Is that one of the issues that you have, not, not obviously not with the Southlands, but with having international promoters who, are, who work on a lot of shows abroad, that they will be trying to bring you in and around different parts of the world so it doesn't necessarily allow you to grow your own fan base closer to home? Well, it's, it's a good thing and it's a bad thing. Like, obviously, when uh, people got to travel over to America, I'll be used to travelling, like, into yeah. different different oppositions, like, backyards. But, um, obviously, I want to get all my fans out as well. So, it's, it's, a, it's a plus and, it, and it's negative, but it is what it is. It's our box anyway. It's, it's the, the ring's a ring, isn't it? So... How key do you think it's going to be in regards to trying to develop and grow your fan base at this stage of your career, knowing you're so close to fighting for a world title because of your rankings? Um, it's, 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 I've been told that it's a bit of the same situation with what um, Joe Calzaghe had. Like, he just came come under the radar, and then once he, he had that fight against, I think it was like Jeff Lace or something, and literally everyone loved him. He was selling rings out left, right and centre. So. It, it, it'll just come, if it don't, it don't, if it comes, it comes, I'm, it's, a, it's a job for me, it's like money, it's money, but obviously I want the fans as well, but just have to see how it goes. It's interesting, you mentioned Joe Calzaghe, who's widely regarded as one of Britain's greatest boxers, yeah. what, are, what are your thoughts, what, not what are your thoughts, but who is your British boxing icon at least, and then on a wider scale? When when I was growing up, it was it, it was Joe Kazagi and uh, Ricky Hatton. Uh, them ones, they're the two what everyone was loving it when I was coming up. But um, yeah, they're, they're the two what I set my eyes on. Like when when Ricky Hatton used to take all the fans over against like Floyd Mayweather, yeah. and like that's what you want in boxing. That's what you think of. So I was about to say, you know, my my father went out to watch the Ricky Hatton Floyd Mayweather fight, and he was telling me there was over ten thousand Brits out there, and he'd yeah. never experienced anything like it. Is that the level that you want to reach? Is that where where you can see your career going? Hundred percent. That's that's what you want in boxing, don't you? Like get ten thousand fans to go and take over Las Vegas. Like you won't, who wouldn't want that? You know what I mean? So we just have to see how my career goes, and uh, if it happens, it happens. Now, what is Zach Parker like away from boxing? I know we've spoke very very much so about your boxing career so far. But what are you like away from it? Are you shy? Are you quite loud? What what? How do you find yourself in your own personality? Um, I'm quite chilled. I'm a bit of a joker. Like I try and wind people up and that, but it's just like joking wise. But uh, yeah, I'm quite chilled to prefer. Um, I like my, I like watching my TV and I, most most of the time get my series, Game of Friends, something like that. So <laughs> Only Fools and Horses, something like that. So yeah, a, bit, a bit chilled. No, I can relate to Only Falls and Horses, but I'm not a fan of that Game of Thrones. So. <laughs> no, the ending was horrible. Oh, I bet I bet you've heard off most people that it's yeah. shit. But um, yeah, but game, Only Falls and Horses, like, all my family watch that, so I grew up watching that, you know what I mean? What do you get up to outside of camp then? I know you've just mentioned you like to watch series and you're chill and you're relaxed, but do you get to go out much? Yeah, I get to go out like, a bit, um, but... Um, Obviously, I'm I'm train I train all year round, but um, obviously I'm a young lad as well. I go out. You got to enjoy yourself as well. Go go out for a couple of dinners. Go out to, with your mates sometimes. But it's, it's a part of life, isn't it? When you're growing up, you just got to deal with it different ways. How hard is that? You know, you just mentioned you're a young lad. You're coming through. You're highly rated. A lot of expectation around you. 
but then you've got your friends as well, you've got your family, and you kind of have to put all of those guys to one side to focus on yourself, and you'll miss out on certain opportunities, you get to miss out on certain events that everybody gets to go to where you can't because you're in camp and you're preparing for a fight. Does it ever get to you at all? Do you ever think, that I wish I could go and do more? Um, not really, because I've done it since I was such a young lad and like all my brothers and that did it as well. Like you just got to be disciplined and uh, it is what you know. It is like when uh, when they're going out, I think in my mind like I've got to, I've got to train. I've got to, this is my this is my full time job. You know what I mean? They've got jobs. They can do it at the weekends, but I can't. It's a different sort of job. Like if you if you if you go out, you're gonna get unstuck and someone's gonna to to catch you out. So you got got to be dedicated. You just mentioned you know your family there. You've got a, a bit of a rich history of boxing in, in and amongst your family. Just tell, talk to me about that, your brothers and your father. Yeah, my um, dad did it first. Like, uh, did had over 200 amateur fights and then uh, boxed uh, professionally. I think he had only you know, like 10 fights, Bo boxed a couple of uh, world champions, boxed uh, Chris Eubank and then uh, uh, Cornelius Carr. And then uh, my brother um, started off, uh, two, of them, two of them went amateur. Uh, one box Matthew Macken like five or six times like um, they went half and half of each other and then my other brother he he was boxing the amateur as well they both had like, over like 60 fights each and then one of them turned pro uh, he, had, he had like 14 fights something won 13 so we've got we've got a uh, whole family's uh, full of boxing people and my cousins do it as well so Connor, Connor Parker and Callum Parker Callum was amateur but kind of turned, turned over to professional ranks as well so you're kind of feeling that you're like the leading light in your family now then it's down to you to not necessarily make it but down to you to maybe progress further than what the rest of your family had during yeah, their yeah. careers? Obviously like I've, I've, won, I've got the highest at the minute because like, I've won my British title and stuff like that. Um, I'm, lead, I'm pretty much leading the way for my whole family but um, yeah, they're going to get her. If they're going to get her, they're going to get her. But uh, yeah, I'm leading the way for them. Does it bring not just a, a sense of pressure, but when you consider what your your dad had, had achieved and going on to fight with Oxford Chris Eubank, like you mentioned, yeah. does he bring any added pressure to yourself? No, not really. Like that was his career, and this is my career. Like I don't really compare like of, yeah. to other people. You know what I mean? I'm set set my own goals, um, but um, yeah, not not really. Now, before I do let you go, I just wanted to get your thoughts on. Other boxing events which have happened recently. We'll start off with most recent, just a matter of last week. Tyson Fury's victory over Tom Schwartz out in Vegas, somewhere we've mentioned. What were your thoughts on that fight? Yeah, yeah, he did well. Um, I think he got around for, uh, second or third, didn't he? Yeah, he did well. He does. He's, he's such. He's a good boxer and he's um, so quick for heavyweight. Heavyweight, like how big he is, so quick. But he um, went over and smashed it in Las Vegas. So like, that's what you set set your goals on when you were such a young kid. But that's one of his uh, one of his goal, um, achievements uh, accomplished since he was a kid. So yeah, it was good. Now a couple of weeks before that, Anthony Joshua suffered a shock defeat to Andrew Ruiz Jr. Before I do ask you about that, it was announced during that fight week that Deontay Wilder was going to rematch Tyson Fury. What are your thoughts with regards to if the rematch was to officially be announced and if it was to happen? Um, yeah, it should be a good fight. Like the first fight, fight was like fireworks. No, everyone thought Deontay Wilder was going to walk through Tyson Fury, but because he was been out for that long, only had a, one fight left. But um, yeah, I think it'll be um, another explosive uh, fight, and uh, should do really good on num numbers. The, I think um, top rank was saying that they might do better than Manny Pacquiao yeah. and um, Mayweather, but I don't know about that. Like, that's that's been the top of the line, isn't it? Yeah. How could you see the rematch unfolding in terms of who could be victorious? Yeah, I think Fury will do it this time. I, th I thought he won, like edged it last time, but obviously when they're in his backyard and he puts you down like twice, they're going, they're going to go like try and c give it to the the home man. But I think he, um, he knows what uh, Deontay Wilder is about now, and uh, he just boxed his head off all night. Now we mentioned uh, Joshua Ruiz again, a shock defeat for Anthony Joshua. How did you see that one unfolding, and what was your thoughts as it was progressing? I, 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 sh I was shocked when it came out like that because um, he put it down first, and then he just come back and uh, started flying little punches away because it's a lot smaller than him, weren't he? But um, I knew that Randy Ruiz is quite good though because he can—he's quite quick for heavyweight, 
hopefully um, Joshua can bring it back and get his belts back. If you was in AJ's position, would you take that rematch immediately or would you look to have another fight beforehand? This is a conversation which a lot of people are having at the minute. Yeah, I think I think he has to really. Like he's been at the top and the way he sells tickets and sells sells like pay per view and that. I think he has to get just go straight back into it, just get the set his set that one right. You know what I mean? But um, hopefully he get, does it. A lot of people seem to suggest that. If he was to lose a rematch, he kind of can't go anywhere with his career. Do you think that's how damaging the defeat will be for him? That he'll find himself in limbo and there's nowhere for him to actually go. No, there's a lot. There's a lot of big fights at heavyweight. Like if he loses again, it's just because the opponent like is not is all wrong for him. You know what I mean? But um, yeah, there's a lot of fights at heavyweight. A lot of exciting fights. Obviously, Dan Tuard and Tyson Fury. They'll be big exciting fights for him. Uh, looking back in the, back in the day when Tyson Fury, um, no, not Tyson Fury, Ty, uh, Tyson box like D Bug D Dug Douglas Bush and Douglas, there, yeah. yeah, and all that. So it, you can go. There's plenty of routes going going forward. And obviously last weekend, uh, Kid Galahad lost to Josh Warrington in his first world title tilt. Many people had it for Warrington, many had it for Galahad. It's kind of split opinion. If you watched it, what was your thoughts on it? I didn't watch it to be fair, but. Um, that fly again. <laughs> yeah, I didn't, I didn't. I know. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't really watch it to be fair. But um, Josh Warrington has got such a big engine on him, like he don't stop. So, but uh, Kid Gallagher, I do like him because he's awkward and that. But um, yeah, I didn't watch it though, so I can't really say yeah. say a lot about it. Well, Zach Parker, I've kept you for long enough. I know you'll be eager to get into your session now. Final word with you. Anything you want to leave on? No, I'm all good, mate. Like, obviously, cheers for coming, and uh, I hope to see you again. Well, Zach Parker, I appreciate your time. It's great to meet you for the first time as well, so thanks for Boxing Social. Yeah, cheers, mate. Nice one.